Are you shooting weddings with Sony cameras? Or maybe you're just about to make that jump to the promised land? Well, I'm glad you're here, because in this video, I'm gonna give like a quick roundup of a few most important features slash settings that maybe are not that obvious, but very useful for wedding photography with Sony cameras. So let's roll in. <laughs> Hello everyone, uh, my name is Magic, I'm a wedding photographer, Sony Europe ambassador and father of four and I do welcome you to uh, this internet place of mine which is my YouTube channel. Uh, this is my new YouTube channel, I just started like two weeks ago. So I'm happy you're here, I'm mainly talking about photography, um, Sony gear and shooting weddings so if you're into this uh, feel free to watch my other videos and maybe stay for a longer time by subscribing to the channel. So let's just get right into it. The first thing that I think is one of the most important features of like the modern uh, Sony mirrorless camera, so all A7 series starting from third generation would be dual card slot. So in my eyes, when you're a wedding photographer, you're responsible to capture those moments that will never ever happen again. So that like unique moments for your clients. So you might wanna minimize the risk of losing any of the photos by taking all the precautions uh, you can take. And one of these would be recording photos simultaneously to both card slots uh, in your Sony camera. Memory cards, just like all of the electronic devices, uh, can just fail on you, especially these SD cards that are quite fragile. And me, I think I lost like three or four of these cards just dying on me for no reason at all. So what you wanna do is set up your camera to record all the raw files to both of the cards. And in order to do that, you have to go to, to the menu, set up six, and then you'll have record media settings. That's at least for the cameras like a7 III, a7 R3, a7 R4, a9, a9 Mark II. So like basically all these modern cameras that you can get right now. And what you're gonna choose is recording mode. You switch from standard to simult dot. So as you can see, you have simultaneously recording either just photos or just videos or both photos and videos. In my case, I do photos and videos just in case I, for some reason, I press that record button to record uh, like a quick video and I want to have it on both of the cards. The second thing I want to talk about today is focus settings. I think for the most photographers new to Sony or switching to Sony mirrorless system, uh, the number of focus settings can be overwhelming. I cannot even count how many times I've been asked like, hey, which focus settings do you use for weddings? And for me, it kind of, you know, depends on the situation, obviously, but let me just break this down for you so you can understand it and use it uh, for your workflow. So first thing that you wanna set up shooting Sony is continuous out of focus uh, mode. Basically, when you were shooting DSLRs before, you might have been used to just, you know, clicking and recomposing, clicking, holding the button and recomposing and stuff like that. Like in Sony, it doesn't make any sense. Like the tracking system and continuous AF system is way better than single system. So I suggest uh, switching to AF See, that's the first step. Then you have various options of focus area to choose from. So going from the top, you have wide, which is basically auto. Um, camera will recognize anything that's interesting in the frame and will just focus on something that is either moving or, you know, that AI in Sony camera will, will guess what is interesting in the frame and focus on that. So basically here, you don't have any control over what are you focusing uh, on. So I wouldn't recommend using wide, unless in some cases, maybe you just completely don't know what's gonna happen in front of you and you wanna rely on like, like catch anything that's moving quickly. So that's the only case I'd see using wide focus area would make sense. Um, then we have a zone one. So like zone is basically just like wide, but smaller. So you have like a piece of a frame that camera again decides what to focus on but with a range of that zone. There's like few zones across the frame that you can choose from uh, using your joystick. The third option is center which I have never used personally. So like in this instance the camera is just focusing in the center of the frame, just the center. You cannot move it, you cannot change it, it's just the center. So if, if you have any cases for that, go for it. 
Then there's flexible spot uh, and you can switch the size of the spot from small to medium to large by just going left and right uh, while, choosing, while choosing this option. So here you decide either by moving with your joystick or touching on screen when you have touch screen uh, enabled, where do you want the camera to focus? For me, most of the cases I do use flexible spot. So most of the times I'll be using my joystick to just focus on the elements of the frame that I want to focus on. But with this settings, you have to be quite fast with like moving around that focus box on the screen. But uh, yeah, I use it a lot. And in a second, I'll tell you how to mix it up with eye out of focus. The next one is expanded flexible spot. So basically it's just like focus spot and a few focus points around it. I don't use it much, but that's basically giving your camera option to not only focus on that little point that you are pointing at, but maybe there's something very close to that point moving around and camera will just automatically grab on that and use it. And the last one is lock on, which is basically whatever your camera will uh, grab focus it will stick to that point and track this point depending on which camera you have so either one of the third generation cameras like a7 III or a7r3 or maybe a9 or a7 IV this tracking will be better uh, in this newer cameras or a9 series but basically it works really well and with lock on you get to choose which other focus area you're using uh, to lock on. So going left and right, you can choose all of the ones that, that are uh, available to the camera. So wide zone, flexible spot, expand flexible spot. You choose any of these and then when your camera grabs a focus, it will just stick to that point no matter what's gonna happen in the frame. And then, I know, that's not the end yet. On top of that, there's eye autofocus, which from the firmware number 3.0 for A7 cameras, it's by default activated when you half press a shutter button. So basically, when you just press a shutter, the camera will find eye in that frame and stick to the eye while you're holding your uh, shutter button half pressed. But then you have some control over it. So that's a question that a lot of people would ask me like, hey, if you have a bunch of people in the frame, how did you decide in which eyes your camera is going to focus? So yeah, that comes down to the focus area you're using. If you're going for wide, you don't get to decide anything. Camera will just find some eye and just stick to it and maybe change to another one without you having any choice over that. But if you're using any of the other option, so maybe zones, so you're just limiting the camera, hey, look only in this zone and then it will just find eyes only in the zone that you are in or the third my favorite options when you are using flexible spot and half press a shutter camera will focus on the eye that is closest to the focus point you are using at the moment so if there's a person on the right side of the frame and you're gonna get your focus point close to that person half press a camera will most likely get the eye of that person and stick to that unless the person goes away from that point if you would like to stick to that person then you go lock on yeah so that's focus settings quite complex you have you know three layers of, of basically setting the focus system but if you get familiar with it and know which settings to choose for which occasions uh, you will do great silent shooting this one is massive it's a feature that probably most of photographers like dream about to have in the occasions like there's something very intimate happening in front of the camera and you don't want to just click clack 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 all the time in front of the people then switching to that silent mode is amazing like your camera uses electronic shutter to take photos and basically goes totally silent there is no sound whatsoever when taking photos but you need to be aware of the limitation of silent shooting in specific cameras. So basically most of the mirrorless cameras, including all A7 series, so A7 III, A7R3, R4, A7S III, all of these cameras are prone to create this effect called bending, which is horizontal dark lines in the frame under specific conditions. And these conditions is like artificial light indoors. 
The technical reason for that is that like the camera when you go like to electronic shutter will just read the information from the sensor from up to down and it just mismatches the frequency of the light flickering which will cause you these this, this lines that are very very difficult to remove in post-processing so you have to be really very careful with using silent shooting so what are the solutions to avoid this horizontal lines low well, first one like the, the most basic one don't shoot silent indoors under artificial light yes i know like you're most likely want to use silent shooting indoors me personally i don't shoot silent at all Two, the other solution would be trying to slow down your shutter speed, but then you have to slow it down uh, quite a lot to avoid these lines and it's not guaranteed. So if you have time, you might want to try take some few shots with silent shooting maybe in 1 60th of a second, 1 50th of a second and see if that works out for you. But then you might get that motion blur from just shaking the camera or people moving in the frame. So that's also not ideal situation. So the third solution is get A9. So A9 camera, A9 Mark II and now A1 are the only mirrorless cameras that will not give you that effect. That's due to the technology used in the sensor. It is called stacked sensor and a different way and speed of reading the information from the sensor. So these cameras will either have zero banding or just minimal banding that you can easily get rid of. So I know it's a bummer, especially if you have a7 III camera or a7R camera. But the most important thing I want you guys to take away from this video is be aware of bending and be careful with shooting silent. A uh, number four is shoot RAW plus JPEG. So basically, I'm gonna assume that as a wedding photographer, you shoot RAW in the first place. So when you're shooting RAW, the camera creates this preview that is embedded in a RAW photo. Uh, it's like a sort of a JPEG image of like what you see on the screen of your camera. And that's with all type of cameras and all type of manufacturers. Like you shoot RAW, there's embedded preview of the image in that RAW file. And some of the manufacturers or some of the cameras will have higher resolution preview and some of them, including Sony, will have lower resolution of the preview. Why do you need to care about the preview if you're shooting raw? Because maybe just like me, you are using Photo Mechanic to quickly call your images. And what Photo Mechanic and some of the other software does is instead of creating a, a preview from that raw file, it just takes the preview that's, that's embedded in the raw file so you can really quickly access the image. Uh, if you're using Photo Mechanic, you know it's blazing fast. Like right away, it opens all the photos and you can just scroll them one by one and that's just because it just used that preview that is in the file. But the problem with Sony is that the preview file is so small that you cannot zoom in and just check your focus like maybe 100%. So if you want to do that, you need to shoot RAW plus JPEG. Then Photo Mechanic will treat the JPEG file together with the RAW as your preview and you can quickly access full res file and then when you move it to Lightroom or Capture One it will just move the raw files and you can delete and get rid of the JPEG files. The second use case for shooting raw plus JPEG is maybe sometimes just like me again you're transferring your photos or maybe you want to transfer your photos quickly on the go to your phone. So I'm doing that using Imaging Edge uh, application for iPhone. And when you shoot only RAW, when you transfer it to your phone, it's gonna take only that small res preview, which is like, I think 1200 pixels on the wide, so not very big. And if you wanna use it um, somehow, um, maybe make a quick print or something like that, it's just too low resolution. But when you're shooting RAW plus JPEG, it's gonna move that JPEG file. So in the menu, basically you can choose how big that JPEG file you want along with that raw file. Um, I'm going for full res, but you can take a medium size or like a small size, whatever you think will work for you. And the last but not least, uh, the custom menu. If you've been around Sony shooters, you've probably heard that they talk quite often about how bad the Sony menu system is, especially in A7 and A9 series. But for some reason, no one talks about how you can customize the menu and just create your own menu and move all the settings that you want to have quick access to to your custom menu tab. 
So what I'm using is all the features that I want to have quick access to. So for me, it would be setting up date and time because every week when I'm shooting weddings, I'm going to sync my both cameras to the same date and time. So I want to have like quick access to it. Um, then record media settings. So the one to record to both cards. I also have like a touchpad settings, auto review settings. Yeah, so all these features that you want to have quick access to, you can get them to your my menu and it's really helpful. You don't lose time of like finding the stuff in the menu. You just do it once and move these things to your tab of customized menu. Uh, so the second customization I would suggest would be either assigning your custom buttons. So C1, C2, C3 that you can customize from the menu. For some reason, this is under tab number two. So movie settings, menu number eight out of nine. And here you can set up your custom buttons. But also what's amazing, you can set up this function menu setup, which is that quick menu that you have access to when you click FN button. This is visual menu when you have like six boxes on the top and six boxes on the bottom. And you can put a lot of different settings under these boxes. So if you want to have like quick visual access to your white balance, focus settings and stuff like that, you can customize this under your own quick uh, menu. And yeah, I think that's it for today. I hope that was helpful. Let me know in the comments if you have any ideas, like what is the crucial stuff that you want to set up at the beginning of your journey with Sony mirrorless cameras. Also, if you have any questions, leave them down in the comments or shoot me DM on Instagram. I'll be really happy to talk to you. Thanks so much for watching. See you very soon in the next one. Ciao.